Now on the other peg, I'm starting to get the rib right off of this one, and you just start do with a knife. Uh, scissors do better for me. And I cut it a little bit to get a grip, and I just pull. You don't want to cut. You just want that membrane. You don't want to cut all the way down in the meat. Or to the bone or anything. I just cut it to get that started. And I get this, the kitchen scissors which is trying to help with it. Because if not, you'll tear you get some off and not all. So you just want to start it all the way. Lift it up here and here and pull. And of course, you're going to leave some on there. And then you're not going to get all of it off. But once you start to wash your meat thoroughly, each individual piece, you can start to cease, you know, pull the portions that you was not able to pull off. Um, you can pull it off again during the wash process. Just, I used to get a paper towel to help me and my gloves. Um, a lot of gloves, you know, I like the cooking gloves. It's just me, everybody don't, it's everybody has their own, um, you know, preference. I just love to. So see, this is and then bring here, you want to pull that all off the back. And again, if you, as you go down the whole rack or whatever, you leave any piece, you can get it off during the washing process. And I got that off, and I'm going to just cut, cut this up like I did the other one, the other pack, and cut it individually. And then I will go and wash each piece individually with water and vinegar. And again, any piece of uh, membrane that I see that was torn that I couldn't get off with the one pull, I would go in and remove it. And this is all the ribs already. Um, I cut them individually. Now I'm going to wash them and any membrane that is left on them, I will finish pulling them off. These are my ribs after they have been washed and cleaned. Now I'm about to put them in a drainer to finish draining all the excess water off of them. And then I will start to season them. So stay tuned. Now I'm going to season my ribs and get ready to batter them with some all-purpose flour. And then I'm going to fry them and start the process on the gravy to smother them. And I'm going in with some oil and I'm using the grapeseed oil I'm just gonna coat it with that when you used to see me use my gloves I ran out of them so I have to go and grab some more so right now I'm just have to use my hands and a spoon I'm gonna need some accent It is Sunday. What are you all cooking today? Let me know in the comments what you're cooking. Some Lord season salt. I'm just gonna mix it all up. Try to 
pick it up and go to the bottom with it, and then I'll put some more. Stir it up together. I'm gonna need some Tony's Creole. Black pepper. Some sazon seasoning. And this may give it a little flavor, but mostly I use it for the color, y'all. So. Now I'm just gonna mix it up together. You don't get any of my pans and you can fry it. But I do not have gloves today, so. I'm gonna still get in there with my hands, but right now I'm just gonna go in and stir it up with the spoon. Then I go in with my hands towards the end. And I'm gonna add those same seasons again since I done stir it up and give it all a, a good stir. And bring the ones from the bottom to the top, and I'm gonna put those same seasons in it again. Then I'm gonna stir it up, and then I'm gonna go in with my hands. Some more acid. Garlic powder. Laurie's. Light pepper. Onion powder. Sazon. A little bit more grape seed oil. Just a little bit. So now everything is seasoned, seasoned very good and well and seasoned thoroughly. So I'm gonna let it sit here and then I'm gonna get my flour together and so I can batter it with all purpose flour and while my oil is heating up. So see how seasoned it is. I'm gonna now put my flour in a bowl and then I'm gonna put the ribs in that bowl and shake it up so the flour could coat it all the way good. Sometimes if I'm just doing a few pieces, I may put it in a Ziploc bag or something like that. But today I'm gonna to put it in a bowl, a plastic bowl, and put my flour in it to shake it around. And that's all I got. I got some flour in the bowl. And in this bowl, I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoning. Even though I seasoned my ribs really well, I'm still going to just add a little bit of seasoning to my flour, not a whole lot. Just some acid, garlic powder, and I'm going to add a little bit of lard season salt. And some Tony's Creole, that's all. Not much, I'm gonna put the lid on to shake that flour around so the seasonings can mix. Put in a few pieces of ribs. We're gonna do about six of them. And coat it really well, cause I'm gonna fry about six at a time. And it's coated, see it's coated really well. Now I'm just going to shake it off and then drop it to fry. I'm a rough chop a green bell pepper and a one sweet onion. And this will go into my gravy mix 
when I do, um, when I start smuggling the ribs. Just shake all the excess uh, flour off and then you just drop it. So make sure your oil is high. And you can test it out by just dropping a little bit of flour in it before you get before you put, put your first piece in there. And don't overcrowd the pan. Fry it, really and I'm gonna put six pieces in here and start off with. Okay, so the oil can cover the meat. I just gotta pour it just adjusting. And let it fry. Everybody stove or deep fry is different because you're using a deep fry on 350 or if you um, using a regular pot on top of the stove you can kind of eyeball it until when it's ready but again remember you smothering these so after you fry them they're still going back into the pot and a covered pot to simmer for a while so that's going to you know make sure it's well done anyway And because I'm frying this on the stove in a pot instead of my deep fryer on today, I am cooking it on a, uh, it's between high and medium, so like a medium high heat. Not high to burn it, it's like a medium high heat. Um, and I'm just so used to cooking for a long, long, long time, so I cannot really tell you all how many minutes it takes because everybody's stove is different and deep fryer is different. But, um, just... Put them in there and it's fine, you know, you can kind of eyeball them to tell how they look. And then you turn them and let them fry again. Um, sometimes you can drop them because the oil is covered, you don't have it on them. But I, that's my preference. I like to turn them and let them fry again um, like that. And once they start to look a certain color, then you know about how long you have them in there. So you can know when to take them out. For an example, see how that looks. It's about ready to come out, and I'm going to take all of them out, and I'll put it in that aluminum pan I have in the rack until I get all of my ribs fried, and then I'll start making um, the roof of my gravy and um, start to smother them. But I just wanted to show you how it looks. You can get it to your preference. I know my husband loves crispy meat, so that's why I let him go sometime a little longer. But again, they're not going to be too crispy today because I'm going to smother them. So they're going to still get um, wet when I put it in the gravy. So that's how they look. But if you're just going to eat a fries and you like some crispy, you can let it go a little longer to get a crisp to it. And again, I don't know exactly how long because, you know, you just have to add the oil. I like to take them out. I'm going to put in my next bag. Just 
going to drop. I think to turn the heat down a little bit um, because after you fry your first batch, sometimes when you put your second batch in, it start to cook immediately so fast. You don't want that because you don't want it to dry out and it looks like it's done on the outside, but it's really not done and it just dry. So just turn your heat down a little bit and you can also um, adjust it, you know, throughout your cooking. So I'm going now with my second batch. And I'm putting, because it's pot size, I'm just only putting six pieces in it. A lot of times I fry in my deep fryer, but today I'm just gonna fry in this pot because this is the pot that I will be making the gravy in. Um, so I just want all that goodness from what has been fried to stay in the pan. I'm just gonna adjust it just going to get in there. Adjust it so that the oil is covered. And that's it. Right. Gotta give my husband one piece of fried rim. He, um, he wanted one. <laughs> now he come back for another piece. So I'm giving him another piece of fried rib to try. How it came? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm still frying my batches. Um, and then I'm going to you see me smother that. That's the bone my husband had got up for two fried ribs while I got finished cooking the fried ribs before I smother them. I just want to show you the bone that it is well done and crispy. last batch which is the fourth batch after this and then I stock on my onion and gravy. Now I'm putting in my last batch. This is my wheel sitting over there, ready to get thrown in some gravy. So I'm almost finished. I'm gonna go in now with my last
Okay, I'm now finished my last batch. And it's all well done and crispy, just in case if anybody wanted a piece of fried, just fried rib without the um, gravy. So now I'm going to um, get rid of a lot of this grease, a lot, 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 <laughs> and leave just a little bit at the bottom. So I left some grease in the bottom of the pan that I fried the rib in, and this is the dripping from the fried ribs. It may look like a lot in here to you all. I usually don't use leave that much in the bottom. However, I'm cooking a lot of ribs, so. Um, but you do not have to, you do not have to use that much if you don't want. So what I'm going to do now is um, all of my chopped bell pepper and onion. I'm going in here. I turn my stove down to uh, medium low. And I'm just going to put all of that in there. And see, that's another drop. I left quite a bit of much because I had a lot of vegetables. The green bell pepper and the onion was a lot chopped up. And I said, I can coat it really well. And saute it a little bit. It's not a lot. Then I'll go in with my liquid in a few minutes. That has been like three minutes, but you can see that all that grease that I left in the bottom is, has been soaked up by these vegetables. But again, if you think it's too much grease, you can leave that out. You can leave as much out as you want to. Now I'm going in with um, some water. And I'm going to turn my um, stove up to medium high. Just so it can boil once I put the liquid in. So I just put that much um, water in it. That was... Mm, about three and a half cups of water. I'm gonna put some more because I have a lot of um, ribs that need to go in there. So I'm going in with about um, three more cups of water. Even though the ribs are seasoned, I'm going to put a little bit of season. I'm going to put the top on it, bring it to a boil, add in my gravy. Now, at the part, if you wanted to make um, gravy from scratch, before you put your water in it, when you saw uh, when I had the vegetables all in the oil and stirring that together, that is where you go in with some flour some all-purpose flour and brown it and keep stirring it in the vegetables until you get, you know, the, the flour turned brown. And you can make your roux like that from stretch. But today I'm not doing from stretch. I'm using a brown gravy pack. But for you all who do not like to use brown gravy pack, before you put your water in, go ahead and brown your flour and stir it up and get it all, you know, the color that you want in your vegetables. Then you add your water. You can add seasons if you want in, put the lid on and bring it to a boil. But I'm not doing it from scratch. I'm using a brown gravy pack. So I went ahead and add my water, add some seasoning, stir it up, bring it to a boil, and add my brown gravy pack in there. And then I'll add my meat to the dish. But again, you do not have to use the packed gravy around your flour. I'm just not doing it today. So I'm going in, that's a little bit of acid, a little bit of garlic powder, not a whole lot. Tony's Creole. A little bit of onion powder. Black pepper. And that's all. And it's not gonna be salty. think it's too much salt intake for you, you it, because you already seasoned your your meat and fried it like that you do not have to add any additional seasonings to your uh, water and your gravy mix 
but um, I am. So I'm gonna put the top on it and bring it to the bottom. Yep. So while I'm waiting for that to come to a boil, I'm gonna take my um, cup, I'm gonna add some cold water and my brown gravy pack, give it a stir because this is what I'm gonna pour into my boiling uh, water mixture. Now that it already came to a boil, I'm gonna remove the lid and the mixture that I, the brown gravy mixture, I'm gonna pour in here. But if you use, you made your uh, gravy from stretch with the brown flour root, then yours should already have been brown now and um, you would have to do the step. Let's go in there. Pour it in there, that just to give it a little brown. Or I could have, um, cause it was already um, the color brown really but I put the um, gravy pack in it or you can put the flour in it because this is what's gonna help it get thicker as well. Um, and I'm gonna put the lid on it, let it fall up some more. Then I add in my meat. Now I'm gonna add my meat to this. And again, I have so much liquid in there because I have a lot of um, ribs and I want to make sure I have a, a lot of gravy. And that's another reason why I put some seasonings in my water because in addition to the seasonings already on, on the reels because I know I was adding a lot of water so I wanted it to be seasoned pretty good a gravy and I'm not going to put all these in here I'm going to leave some out to get um, you know to stay fried so if anyone want any fried pieces I can get it Maybe about, cause it's already done. So I'm just gonna let it ball up in here to get thickened. And ball some liquid down. That's why it's in here falling too. Okay. And I'm gonna cover it. And I'm turning my heat down to a medium. And I left some fry. But I have a lot of gravy, so if later if you want to put any um, gravy on the, you know, on the fried part, or like if you want to just have rice and fried ribs with some of the gravy on the side, and the, and it's not coated on the rib, then you can. That's why. Um, that I left some. Um, left out fried as well and I'll show it to you so that's the fry so fry that I left out and then this is the one that is getting smothered and this water this liquid will um, cook down so your pot won't be full of this and then your liquid will thicken as well and just wait for the end results and it's coming along pretty well. I'm gonna stir it up in a minute. And again, I'm just letting it simmer so it can thicken and then some of the liquid to evaporate out. And my fry ribs in the bag. It's not thick like I wanted it yet. So it's gonna sit there and simmer in all that goodness, all that seasonings and onions and peppers. Oh my. Okay, 
and it still has a thicken like I want it to so but in a few minutes I'm not gonna cook it too long because I don't want it to be falling off the bone I want it to really stay on the bone but it's very tender so I'm gonna give it a few more minutes for the liquid to ball out some and then I'm gonna go in with a few teaspoons of thickener which is cornstarch and it's actually starting to thicken even without the um, cornstarch, but I'm still gonna add some cornstarch in it. But you can see that's off the flour of the ribs that helps it thicken. And this is what I'm gonna add to a cup cornstarch. And um, we're putting about, uh, I, I'm not measuring it. But I put about that much, and I'm just going to add some water to it, stir it up, and pour it in there to thicken my gravy some more. And I'll be finished. This is my cornstarch stirry to thicken the gravy. I'm just going to pour some in there, like in the middle, and then I'll stir it around. Everything is finished again. Like I said, I'm gonna let it sit in about five minutes to slow simmer just to get some more thickness. But at the end of the day, it is finished and um, can be plated. And as you see, that's why I put a lot of water in it, y'all, because I have a lot of ribs as well as I want gravy. So if you decide you don't want to smother ribs and you want the fried ribs, then um, you can still put this on your rice. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Y'all, we are almost at 1,000 YouTube Family Mac members. So look out, be on the way of notifications of when we'll be going live. I know I say once we reach 1,000, we're gonna be going live like once a week, um, cooking, or if I'm not cooking, I find something to go live to entertain you all with. But we will be um, incorporating live this year into our channel and some other things so just stick with us hold on and enjoy this journey with us again I thank you all so much having an amazing week be blessed and I'll see you on the next video bye